We can say some really dumb stuff and we don't know what else to say. Like that nonsense you hear in hospitals and funeral homes, like God has a plan. We just don't know what it is. But when I've experienced loss and I'm feeling so much pain that it feels like nothing else ever existed, the last thing I need is a well-meaning, but Nadia, when God closes a door, he opens a window. Because then that makes me want to ask where that window is so I can push them the fuck out of it. And usually when you're grieving and someone says something so optimistic to you, it's about them. It's about the fact that they simply cannot allow themselves to entertain the finality and pain of death. And so instead, they turn it into a precious moment's greeting card. In moments of grief and loss, we're afraid and doubting and we want answers, kind of like the disciples did three days after Jesus died. They were scared and they were doubting. And this is understandable. And then suddenly, Jesus was standing there right in front of them. And in their fear and disbelief, he didn't rebuke them. He didn't try and convince them of the truth. He said, see my wounds, I'm here. Don't be afraid. After rising from the dead, Jesus turns to his completely freaked out friends who have no idea what this can all mean and asks them the really crucial and deeply theological question. So do you guys have any snacks? I wonder if what this says to us is one, if in the moment of someone's loss, you get all transcendent and spiritual, floating above this disappointing world like a precious moment's angel, you may just miss Jesus altogether because that's him over there at the snack table. And two, in the midst of grief, all anyone can really do is be with us and make some casseroles. See my wounds, I'm here. Don't be afraid, let's eat. And this is what we get to do for each other as well. This is what we get to do for the world God loves so madly.